I'm making this radical claim. I'm saying the type 1 diabetic can live to be 100 years old because it's not the type 1 diabetes that causes all the morbidity and, and, and premature mortality. It's the doctoring that causes them, and the diet, that the combination makes them overuse, have to overuse insulin. That we can keep their sugars relatively controlled with so little insulin that we can now have a type 1 diabetic not have increased morbidity and mortality. I have type 1 diabetes, and I've already noticed a difference this weekend. I've had to drop my insulin. Um, unfortunately, the way I found out was some low blood sugar. Um, do you have a suggestion for what would be a good rescue sugar for me for when I do have a low blood sugar reaction? Date, a date, a medjool date. date. Yeah, okay. a medjool date. Yeah. Okay. They're easy to carry. You can have them in your bag, in your pocketbook. They're, you know, it's, and so you can just suck on a date really fast. It take, works great. Okay, great. Thank you. However, um, let me say that if you do need that, that shows that you did something wrong and you overtook insulin. The difference in the management of type 1, just to be clear here, I manage type 1 very differently than other doctors would, because what they're doing is this. They're telling you, whatever you eat, you'll use the right amount of insulin to cover that food carbohydrate content to keep your sugars well controlled. Right? That's, and, then, and you're adjusting your insulin dose to cover what you're eating. I don't want you to do that. I want you to eat consist I want you to get a fixed amount of insulin like that we find is right for you, which might be around, you know, let's just guess, 10 units of long acting and two units of short acting with each meal for a total of 16 units a day. Let's just say, for example, once we figure you're eating perfectly healthy and you're doing that and you got your weight favorable and that's the amount of insulin you're using, then you try to be consistent with your diet meal to meal, day to day, so you're really not chasing levels up and down. And if you are, you probably did something you shouldn't be doing. Eating a diet, so you're, it's usually whenever a person needs to do that, they weren't doing what they should have been doing. And they weren't, you know what I mean? So if you do things really right, you shouldn't have things that go too high or too low. And that's the beauty of this program, is that the type one diabetics can go out and play a tennis match or go for a two hour hike, bike ride or hike, and they don't, got to, they don't, put the, they don't bottom themselves out because they're not using so much insulin. And they're, they're, they're in better shape. They can, live, they can live their life. They can work. They can exercise because their diet is not pushing them all over the place, up and down. And they're using, they're using so much less. They need so much less insulin. So you're not going to have the effects of, like, the, the extra insulin you needed for the food now it affects you when you exercise because now you're going to push you the other way. So everything gets more stable. So you, and then and I'm making this radical claim. I'm saying the type 1 diabetic can live to be 100 years old. Because it's not the type 1 diabetes that causes all the morbidity and, and, and premature mortality. It's the doctoring that causes them, and the diet, that the combination makes them overuse, have to overuse insulin. That we can keep their sugars relatively controlled with so little insulin that we can now have a type 1 diabetic not have increased morbidity and mortality and live a long, healthy life.